Hey friends, welcome back to Midweek Encouragement. I'll get to the pickles in a minute. Um, do you realize in just like six months, I am going on a missions trip? Yeah, but I'm not leaving the country. Yet I'm leaving the country. And I know that makes no sense at all. In six months, I get to go and work at Operation Christmas Child, packing and sorting and going through the boxes, making sure all of the Christmas boxes have the right things in them, making sure that they're full. And if they're falling apart, I fix them and I tape them up and it's a blast and I love getting to do part of Operation Christmas Child, but it's just six months away. So that, that excites me to think that uh, I get to start making a difference and I'm making a difference right now. And you get to make a difference through Operation Christmas Child as well. Uh, the pickles. Oh, wow. I'm standing here in the church kitchen just because uh, a couple of reasons. One, I needed a solid counter. And I needed a jar that was really hard to open. You ever had one of those? You go, ur, ur, and you feel like, man, I'm getting weaker by the day. No, I think that they use gorillas to put the lids on at the factory. I, it just really seems like that. And, and then that not only do they use gorillas, but they use super glue. So super glue and gorillas are what put these glass lit jar lids on. And it makes it a real struggle sometimes. Uh, sometimes we say, I'm not going to buy that product anymore. It's just too hard to open. And we give up. Well, um, it does take some strength, but after a while, you keep trying, trying, and then somebody else comes along and they do it, and they go, wow, you sure are strong. No, 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 no. You loosened the lid for them. That's right. It wasn't that they were stronger than you. You just had to loosen the lid for them to do it, right? That's what you need to tell yourself and tell everybody else. But if we really want what's on the inside of the jar, you're going to have to get the lid off. I know a young man that uh, he's going to love dad when he comes home because my son loves dill pickles. Yes, he eats them all the time. So I'm, I'm going to use this as a treat for him, but an object lesson to teach us something today. If we really want what's inside the container, then the struggle is worth it. But there's a great deal of frustration that goes along with it. What if there was an easier way to get these crazy lids off? What if someone showed you another method that's been around all the time to reduce your struggle. How would you feel about that person? And how would you feel about yourself? I'm afraid a lot of people, when you discover what I'm going to show you a little bit later, uh, discover this, you're going to go, boy, I sure feel stupid. Don't feel stupid. Don't put my friends down. Understand? This is just something that I had to learn from somebody else. And we're going to pass it on to you because it's something really good and useful. Too often, we, we have come to so set in our ways that we don't think we can learn something new. And we put up walls and we start saying that we're not capable of learning anything new. Well, I asked God what in me, what he wanted me to help all of us understand about this jar and about him. And he started showing me several things uh, that are just so good for us. But for some reason, we have this struggle to get into what he has for us. If it is, it's, it's a, as if somebody has placed glue around him and uh, some gorillas put on the lid, right? That's what religion does. It puts a lid on what God means to be open. Religion puts a lid on how, uh, it, it, it puts a lid on and it keeps people from experiencing what is already available through God and of God through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus didn't create religion. He created the possibility of a relationship. While Jesus was on the cross and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. And this, this curtain was no just little piece of material. It was some thick stuff. It went from ceiling to floor. It was wide. It was thick and was strong. But when it was torn, it was torn from the top to the bottom. It separated what was considered the holy of holies from the rest of everybody. And when that curtain was split, it made it so that people could experience the relationship, the presence, the blessings and the goodness, and so much more of God. The psalmist says in Psalms 101, starting in verse 1, it says, Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. I love those verses and I love how they proclaim how great God is and how being in the presence of God is such a great blessing, not just for us 
And it's not something for us to hoard, but it overflows out of us. Now, if I was one who liked pickles, which I really don't care for pickles, I could eat this whole jar. It wouldn't be unnecessarily unhealthy, but what would be better is if I had some friends over that liked pickles, if I liked pickles, and we shared the pickles. As I was preparing for this lesson, one of the things that God reminded me of was what it says in Psalms 34, starting in verse 8. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, I know some people will say, taste and see that the pickles are good. But no, if the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lion may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. When the Bible talks about the fear of the Lord, it is not just a reverent fear. What it's talking about is being obedient to what God says through his word. And the result of walking in obedience is experiencing the blessings of God and the favor of God. And we lack nothing that isn't good. I mean, we have everything that we need when we walk in that obedience. Now, if you ever met somebody who seems to always be looking over their shoulder in fear, why are they looking over their shoulder in fear? Because they know they've done something wrong. When we walk in obedience with God, we don't have that fear. We don't have to look around worrying, oh, what's going to happen to me? God demonstrated his love for us first in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so when we obey him, we're reciprocating the love that he has for us. Lo loving and caring for, caring for others is a sign that we love God. We don't do things to get others to pat us on the back or for recognition, recognition. We do it because we love God and we desire for others to see him because of our acts of love. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16? He says, in the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. So letting your light for your love for Jesus because God is light and in him there is no darkness, let that shine through your life in the way that you love other people. We can't enjoy the contents of a container as long as the lid is on the container. We can't enjoy the blessings and favor and the goodness of God as long as we don't open ourselves and enjoy him. And to open ourselves, we have to seek him. You're very familiar with uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Love that verse. It's a powerful verse. It was written to God's people who had been in captivity, and they ended up spending 70 years in captivity. And the verse gives us hope. But I believe that hope without faith is simply a wish. Faith and hope travel together. God hasn't forgotten his people in this passage. He hasn't forgotten us today. And even though they were in captivity, and sometimes we are in a captivity, he planned to give them a new beginning and a new purpose. In your frustration, your struggle, don't turtle. God hasn't forgotten you. He hasn't abandoned you. He, has, he is preparing you as he did the people of Judah for something new with him at the center. But until you seek him, you cannot find him. And if we want to know the plans that God has for us, we got to sit down with the planner and we've got to be quiet and listen. And when the lid is stuck, it's time to go back to the muscle, Jesus. And if you listen to the chaos, uh, you won't be able to ever hear it. But if you turn the volume down on the voices of the past, you're going to start to hear, you've got this. I'm with you. So to remove the lid, Jeremiah says, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me, and you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. I, I think that we go to the extreme opposites when it comes to figuring out uh, this relationship thing with Jesus. We either overcomplicate it or we oversimplify it. In reality, it comes down to this, trust. Once we find him, we can't stop. 
we need to keep seeking him and seeking what he desires for our lives and seeking what he is doing by trusting him because he knows something more than we do. He's got a better perspective. He can see above where we are. The jar on this lid, yeah, it's difficult. But I learned something a long time ago. I learned something from somebody that only had one hand. And what they did was they said, when you have a jar that's really hard, turn it over. This is why we have the hard counter. Smack it on the counter really hard. If you have to, do it a second time. And then it'll turn easy. You see, I think the way to identify what is keeping us from enjoying the full flavor of Jesus may be the lid that others have put on us. The way to open it up is to forgive them. It may take some time to remember who it is. It may take some time to continually every day say, I forgive them. And you're going to have to call out to Jesus and say, Jesus, I need your help to forgive them for the hurt they've done to me. But when you open yourself up to what God can do in you and through you by his Holy Spirit, the healing and the freedom can come. I hope God doesn't have to turn you over and smack you on the counter a few times to get you to open up. But I want to encourage you to just sit down in a quiet place, close your mouth, open your ears, and listen to what Jesus has to say. James says that uh, be slow to speak and quick to listen. I think that's why God gave us one mouth and two ears. So we'll be slow to speak and quick to listen. So let's just get quiet and start listening to what he's calling us and what he's saying about us. And we start learning to fear him and walk in obedience to him so that we can hear him every day and open up to the goodness that he has for us. This is Pastor Kevin. Thanks for watching and may God's blessing be upon you. Bye-bye.